Hello viewers, welcome to our channel. I am Dr. Archana Chaube from the Department of Chemistry, Bhopal School of Social Science. We have been dealing with the chapter phase equilibria. In this, we have started with phase rule and in the earlier uh, lectures, we have discussed one component system. Today, we'll continue with another example of one component system that is sulfur system. So let's begin. Today we'll be discussing the sulfur system under which we'll see the three important parts which we talk about in the phase rule that is areas, triple point and curves which appear in the sulfur system. If we talk about sulfur, sulfur is an element which is present in the 16th group of the periodic table and it comes under the second period that means it falls in the second period and 16th group and it is a p block element but sulfur is present in four different forms in the nature and one of which is the gaseous form that is gaseous sulfur one is in the liquid state and the two forms are the solid phase of sulfur the two forms of sulfur which are solid that is the monoclinic and the rhombic form are the most stable form which are found in nature. This diagram that we see is the phase diagram of sulphur which is uh, uh, showing the variation of pressure and temperature and how the different states of sulphur appear as we change the condition. Now why we are saying that sulphur is a one component system because whether you say that sulphur in the liquid form, in the gaseous form or the two solid forms that is the rhombic and the monoclinic each can be chemically described by simply using the one formula that is S. Therefore, it has only one component involved in it. So, when in the earlier lectures when we discussed about the phase rule that is F is equal to C minus P plus 2. So, here for this uh, example as well our value of C will remain C is equal to 1 because it is a one component system but the value of p that is the phase that will differ because when we are saying that sulfur is existing in four forms rhombic monoclinic the liquid sulfur and the vapor sulfur so these are all four different states which can be which are separable and which can be identified therefore the value of p over here at different cases it can be p can be 4 3, 2 and 1 depending on how many phases are coexisting at a particular condition of pressure and temperature. Now as we are talking about the different forms, the most stable form of the sulphur is the rhombic form and when this rhombic form is slowly heated, it gets converted into the monoclinic uh, form. So the temperature at which this conversion occurs is the uh, temperature which is 95.5 degree Celsius. This we can see in the diagram as well which we were showing over here. Here you can see this is the temperature, the arrow is representing the temperature at which the transition of rhombic into monoclinic occurs. This is the range of temperature where the, when we gradually heat it as soon as this temperature is reached immediately we will see the conversion of one state into the other. Similarly, when this monoclinic form is heated further and when we reach the temperature of 119 to 120 degrees Celsius the solid forms starts getting melted and we achieve the next state which is the liquid form. So, this conversion occurs at a temperature of 119 to 120 degrees Celsius with the atmospheric conditions of 10 raised to the power 4 atmosphere. But as we know that as the pressure decreases because this is the property that with decrease in pressure the gaseous form dominates in any of the condition and with increase in pressure the liquefaction will start to occur. So now when we see uh, this complete phase diagram, we can see I have shown here in different colors. So uh, we can see that the yellow color is the region, this area completely defines the presence of the rhombic form of sulphur. The central one which is uh, the brown color, it uh, defines the presence of monoclinic state. The green region defines the presence of 
the liquid sulfur and the blue region defines the presence of the gaseous sulfur. All are represented by S only but just to differentiate we put a subscript into it as R for rhombic, small m for monoclinic, L for liquid and G for gaseous. Otherwise chemically all can be represented as S which is the symbol for sulfur. And here in the diagram we can also see the specification at which different how with the variation of temperature as we move horizontally from left to right in this particular diagram how we change in temperature from 95.4 degrees till 119 the transition from rhombic into monoclinic and then into liquid occurs and beyond this if we add at particular the temperature of 119 degrees if the pressure decreases the graph will start moving into the blue area that means from the liquid state the sulfur will start getting converted into its gaseous state. So this I have already described the four specific areas which represent the presence of each individual form of sulfur that is rhombic, monoclinic, liquid and gaseous. Now moving ahead after the specific areas we will discuss the triple point like in case of water system there was only one triple point triple point means that the three phases can coexist together and when we talk about the phase rule we have been discussing that by phase rule we calculate the degree of freedom and degree of freedom means how many variables have we have the freedom to change the value so since we know that for areas the degree of freedom comes out to be 2 that means at various values of temperature and pressure we can obtain the area we keep on moving in that area and the particular phase can be obtained when we talk about triple points we have calculated that for triple point the value and in a one component system the value of f comes out to be zero that means it is an invariant system invariant system which means that we have no freedom to change the temperature pressure conditions. So in case of sulfur system there are three triple points that exist. So let us discuss each one by one. The first triple point is the point where which exists at the temperature condition of 95.3 where we have shown the transition of rhombic into monoclinic. This is the point where when the pressure of 5.1 into 10 raised to the power of minus 6 atmosphere is uh, obtained and the temperature is 95.3 at this temperature pressure condition there are three states which can coexist the solid rhombic solid monoclinic and the gaseous state therefore when you apply the phase rule f is equal to c minus p plus 2 since it is a one component system and we have already discussed that c for this case will be 1 and because the phases that are existing in this point are 3 so p value will be 3 plus 2 when you solve it the value will be 3 minus 3 that is equal to 0 that means the degree of freedom you have no freedom to change this temperature pressure condition by default only at a temperature of 95.3 degrees Celsius and a pressure specified 5.1 10 raised to the power minus 6 atmosphere in this condition only the rhombic monoclinic and the gaseous sulfur can coexist so therefore this is the first triple point of the sulfur system similarly the second triple point appears at the temperature condition of 119.1 degrees Celsius and pressure condition of 3.2 10 raised to the power of minus 5 atmosphere and at this point the three phases that coexist are the monoclinic state which is solid the gaseous state of sulfur and the liquid state this is the point which shows the presence of monoclinic, 
the liquid state and the gaseous state of sulfur. So again applying the same rule for this point as well we get the value of F is equal to 0. And the third triple point which occurs in this diagram it appears at a temperature of 154 degrees Celsius with atmospheric conditions of 1420 atmospheric pressure and here the three states that coexist are again monoclinic, rhombic along with the liquid state. So these are the three triple points that exist in this particular sulphur system and each point as we have discussed in the general rule also that areas will always have the value for F is equal to 2, lines will have the value F is equal to 1 and points, triple points will always have the value F is equal to 0. So we can say areas are bivariant, lines are univariant and the triple points are invariant in terms of degree of freedom. Moving ahead, now since this diagram is a bit complicated, so there are many curves which appear and each curve represent the equilibrium between two states like area is representing the presence of only one state, purely only one state is present. Like point, a triple point represents the presence of three different phases or three different uh, natures of sulphur coexisting. So what does a line represent? A line represents the equilibrium between any of the two states like we discuss one by one. There are these specifically uh, the following conditions of lines. The first one is the lower left. We have marked it with number so that it is easier for us to understand. Lower left when you move from the lower left corner towards 1. This I am moving. You can see the red highlight. This is the curve that we are talking about. This curve represents the equilibrium between the two states. That is the rhombic sulphur along with the gas. This region is the rhombic sulphur along with the gas. Then we come to the next curve that is you have to now move from point 1 to point 2. This is point 1 to point 2. As we move we can see that this region shows the interconversion of monoclinic sulphur with the gaseous sulphur. Then now when we move from upper side from point 2, this curve, this curve represents the equilibrium that is established between the liquid sulphur and the gaseous sulphur. Equilibrium means at any point on this curve, any point represents the conversion of the liquid to the gas. The temperature pressure conditions that we obtain on each point of this curve represents the equilibrium and the coexistence of the liquid and the gas together. Now we move to the next curve that is between point 1 and 3 which is over here point 1 and 3. This curve is representing the interconversion of solid rhombic into solid monoclinic. Then the curve between point 2 and 3 which is this line over here. This curve represents the interconversion of liquid sulphur and monoclinic. It is establishing the um, equilibrium between the monoclinic sulphur that is the solid state and the liquid sulphur. And the last curve when you move uh, above ahead from point 3, this curve represents the equilibrium between the liquid sulphur and the rhombic. So in total if we see there are total six different curves which are specified in this diagram. The first showing the equilibrium between rhombic and gas sulphur. The second showing equilibrium between monoclinic and the gaseous state. The third showing equilibrium between the liquid and the gaseous state. Fourth showing equilibrium between the two solid state rhombic and monoclinic. The fifth showing equilibrium between the monoclinic and the liquid state and the last one showing equilibrium between the rhombic and the liquid state. And each of these curves the value for degree of freedom F will be 1. That means 
by changing either one pressure or temperature still we can continue to move on the line and each point on the line shows the interconversion of the two states so by this we have discussed the sulfur system which again is an example of one component system so in these consecutive lectures we have been discussing phase rule for one component system taking example of water and sulfur in further lectures now we will continue the same topic and we'll move ahead with the two component system i hope you have understood the topic thank you